Welcome to this UniLogic tutorial. UniLogic is the complete application development environment for our Unitronics Unistream control platform. Hello. My name is Ophir Levy. I'm an application engineer at Unitronics. This tutorial is about Modbus. In this tutorial, we will create Modbus slave application and learn how to address its tags. Modbus master application and we learn how to configure its commands. In this example, the Modbus master will write one coil to the slave in order to change a motor switch and will read one register which is the speed of the motor. In UniLogic, we will first set up the PLC communication for the Modbus. We can use for example Modbus TCP or Modbus over RS485. If we wish to use RS485, we will select Serial COM1 from the Solution Explorer under Protocols Modbus. There we can configure the baud rate, data bits, parity and stop bits. In order to set the Ethernet settings for the Unistream panel, in the Solution Explorer we will select PLC Communication, Physical, Panel Ethernet. Then in the Properties window at the right we can configure the IP address, subnet mask and default gateway. Now let's configure the Unistream as Modbus slave. We will click on Modbus and in the main window we will select Modbus slave. Please note that we can set the Unistream to be both master and slave in the same project. After adding Modbus slave you can see in the tags window that a struct for the Modbus slave is automatically created. This struct contain all the required details and statistics for the Modbus slave. In the properties window we can determine the communication type whether it will be Ethernet or Serial. In this example we will use Ethernet. We can set the slave ID and also the slave name. In the main window we will configure the slave coils and registers addresses. Since the memory of the tags is dynamic, we will need to select the tags we wish that the Modbus master will have access to. I already configured few tags. For example, let's say I wish to set the motor switch tag to, uh, to be accessible from the Modbus master. We will choose the coils tab and click on Add new operation. A new line has been added to the list. In tag, we will select the motor switch. In address, we will set the addressing of this tag. For example, I will set it to 40. Under action, we can select whether this tag will be read only or write. The write option enables both read and write. Let's configure another tag. This time we will configure a register. We will select the registers tab and click on add new operation. In tag we will select the speed. We will set the address as 100. Under action we will choose read, meaning the Modbus master can only read this tag, but cannot write into it. Of course, we can set more registers and coils to the list. We finished configuring the Unistream as Modbus slave. Now, let's create the Modbus master application. From the Solution Explorer, under Protocols, Modbus, this time 
we will select Modbus Master. Automatically, one remote slave is added. Please note that we can add many remote slaves. After adding the remote slave, you can see in the tags window that a struct for the remote slave is automatically created. This struct contains all the required details and statistics for the remote slave. In the properties window, we can determine the communication type, whether it will be Ethernet or serial. In this example, we will use Ethernet. We will set the remote slave IP address and port number. We can also set the remote slave name. The active field determines whether this remote slave is active or not. We will select here a bit tag. When communication is set to Ethernet and the active tag is on, the master will initiate the connection with the remote slave according to the IP address and port number. In the main window, we will configure the Modbus commands for exchanging data with the slave. Under Coils tab, we will add new operation in order to change the state of the motor switch of the Modbus slave we created previously. Under Tag, we will choose the tag which holds the value we wish to write to the slave. I will select motor switch state. The address will be 40. Since this is the address we set for the motor switch in the Modbus slave application. The action will be write since we wish to write a value to the slave. We can select the type of the command. We will leave it as write multiple coils. In every period field, we can choose the interval for sending the command. The default is 100 millisecond. In active field, we can also link a tag in order to enable or disable the command. Since the empty text is green, it is not a must to set this tag. If we will leave it as empty, then by default the command will be active. Now let's configure the register to read the speed. We will select the registers tab. In tag, we will choose the tag that the speed will be read into. The action will be read, since we wish to read the value from the slave. We can select the type of the command we will leave it as read holding registers. We will set the address as 100. And active field will stay enabled. If we wish to read or write number of consecutive coils or registers, we need to set an array with the required length. For example, if we wish to read motor parameters in length of five registers, we need first to create an array with length of five. Then, when we will select this array in the tag field, the command will automatically read or write in length of five. We finished configuring the Modbus master application. You could see how easy it is to configure both master and slave applications using a simple list of addressing and commands. This concludes this tutorial about Modbus. You can find more information and example applications in our website. Thank you for viewing this tutorial and we hope to see you again.